the history of music licensing. One of the things that you might have heard about organisations called collection societies. Examples of this are organisations like ASCAP in the US or BMI, or organisations like STIM in Scandinavia, PRS and the MCPS in the UK. Now, what are these organisations and what do they do? Again, cast your mind back to an age before the internet. You've got various performances going on of different types of music in different venues on television, in theatres, in concert halls. And the publisher and the composer, the owners of that music, are collecting revenues from the performance of that music. So how do they go about collecting these small amounts of income that are due to them from the public performance of this music? Well, along comes the concept of a collection society, which is an organisation which effectively does a blanket deal with all these small publishing companies to say to, for example, a concert hall venue, OK, if you perform any of this whole catalogue of music in your venue during this year period, then you pay us one set fee. And then you report to us the individual uses of that music during that year's period. What the concert hall venue does is just pay one entity a set fee for an annual licence. And then it's up to the collection society to divvy that up into all the different companies that are members of that organisation so that they get their respective share of the royalties. So what effectively these collection societies do is they put together blanket licences with single organisations so that that organisation, be it a concert hall venue or a TV broadcaster, or these days the likes of YouTube, don't have to deal with all these individual companies, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of them, and do separate individual licences with each company. What they do is negotiate one overall deal and they pay one overall fee to those companies and then it's up to that collection society to divide the use up and pay its members a fee according to the usage. Now, one of the misnomers with collection societies and one of the areas that can lead to confusion is that you as the maker of the video, sometimes people get concerned that that means they have to pay a royalty every time something, your video, for example, is shown, say, on YouTube. Now, that's not the case. Collection societies tend to deal with the overall broadcaster or the concert hall venue when you put a video onto YouTube, YouTube have actually already done a blanket deal with a collection society for that territory. And they don't charge you a fee for that. It's just a commercial arrangement between YouTube and the collection society. So you don't generally have to worry about the royalties due from collection societies. The only difference there being is if you actually are the owner or operator of that venue. So you may well have heard and you may well see when you go into a restaurant, if commercial music is being played, on the way in you might see a little sticker, which is the sticker for a collection society, say the PPL or the PRS, ASCAP in America. What that is saying is that that restaurant owner has bought a license to play music in that venue. So in effect, they're the concert hall owner. So they've done the deal there with just one organisation. and. If you own a venue or if you own a restaurant, then you'll be able to find your collection society in that territory and you'll be able to pay your fee for that. But if you're the video maker and you're, you're making a video which is providing the video to a, an online broadcaster or a venue, as long as that venue or broadcaster has license, then you generally don't need to worry about any fee or license that you need to pay to a collection society.